Perfect. Okay. Uh, good evening to everyone. Now, I think you all are preparing for the final examination. Uh, first, I will give my introduction about myself. I am Shanta Dikari. I, I think you might be aware about myself. I am not going to explain uh, more detail about myself. I am a member of Shri Sri Lanka. Uh, and today we are going to discuss how are we going to face uh, CL3 advanced uh, management accounting subject. And you might have already uh, faced the uh, mock exam paper. And while we are running through the paper, you can identify uh, some areas uh, which we may be much interested in the examination as well. And you can get an idea how to tackle the exam as well. Now, uh, it's almost a few days to spend for the final examination. Therefore, you need to spend uh, this time very fruitfully without taking much time. First, we will go through the paper. Uh, I will share the screen uh about the paper and i think you can see the paper here it's a three hour paper and you will have 15 minute reading time and you can read and you can plan your exam paper very important uh, instruction from from my end before you answer the exam paper first read the requirement of the question right you have three section first section 10 mcqs and second section, four question with you 10 marks each. And third section, two question with each will give you 20 marks, right? That's how it looked like. And you have three hour paper. That means each mark you can spend 1.8 minutes. And if it is 10 marks question, you can spend 18 minutes. I think it is pretty much clear about the duration and you have to plan accordingly. Don't spend any spare minute uh, other than the allocated time. Right. With this information, first I will move to the section one, MCQ section. Uh, yes, this recording will be uploaded and the answer script also will be shared after the session. Don't worry. Right, section one in MCQs, each will give you two marks, very easy to score. And if you uh, get this one done properly, you can earn 20 marks. Right, question number one, without taking much time, which three of the following are the three we associate with big data? I think you have gone through the big data lesson. And if you have learned about big data, big data means those are unstructured data, uh, which you can use to make decision. Therefore, there are three Vs associated with the big data. What are they? Volume, velocity, and variety. Therefore, your correct information, correct answer should be C, volume, velocity, and variety. That is the correct answer, three, because there, there are huge volume, and it, you, you can't expect in a social media platforms, any other platform, those unstructured data you will gather and it will be analyzed in a mainframe computer and it will be provided for the decision making that we have learned. There are for project management, uh, uh, forecasting purposes, those big data will be used. Customer behavior analysis, you might have already learned that one. Therefore, correct answer for part, the first question is volume, velocity and variety answer C. The second question related to the learning curve theory application. Look at that because learning curve theory means when the labor gate do the same task on a repetitive basis, then labor gate experience. The time taken by the initial step may not be the time taken to the next product or next unit. When you continue the continue to do the same task again and again, you will specialize. Right. We'll read this illustration. The following information related to the production of Sigma company PLC, which produces the product called Alpha. Time taken by first unit of product is eight hours and expected learning rate is 80%. Right, first unit taken by eight hours. The learning will be ceased after producing 4,000 units and the output above 4,000 units will take the same time taken in the 4,000th unit. After the 4,000th unit, there won't be any learning the time taken by 4000 unit will remain continued 
if company intends to produce 6,000 units, the approximate labor hours requirement would be, now you need to calculate. Earlier, when we calculating labor time, what we have done, eight hours required per unit. If you want to manufacture 6,000 units, what we have done, eight into 6,000, 48,000 hours you have forecasted. But that is not the real way to do that. If you consider the effect of learning, learning curve effect, you have to estimate. Okay, I will show you how to work out learning curve calculation and I will show you how to work it out and you need to work out the answer. I think you might have uh, already learned, learned about, uh, and you heard, learned about yx equal x power b. That is the formula uh, that you might have already learned. Right? I will take, uh, I write here itself. Okay. Okay, second. Right. When you are going to calculate learning curve theory, you will take y x equal y x equal a x power b a x power b. What is a y x equal a x power b? This is the learning curve form formula which you have to use when you are calculating uh, learning curve effect yx is if you produce x number of output what is the average time taken by each unit now ax power b a is the time taken by first unit in this illustration if we work out yx mean first now it says learning will cease after 4000 unit therefore what you have to do you have to take calculate what is the total time taken up to 4000 and 4,000 to 6,000, what is the total time? Because 4,000 to 6,000, there won't be any learning effect. Therefore, you have to work out that one as well. Therefore, first what you need to, you have to do, first calculate time taken by 4,000 unit. You can easily calculate is like that. Y 4,000, right? Y 4, Y X mean X is 4,000 equal. A time taken by first output is 8 hours into x, x is 4,000 unit power b. b is log learning rate, log 0.8, that is 80% learning rate, divided by log 2, log 2, log 2. Then you can take the answer, then you will get the average time if you manufacture 4,000 unit, then you can work out what is the value for that. Then it need to be multiplied by 4,000. Then you will get the total time required for 4,000 unit, right? Thereafter, you can do your calculation uh, in your lab uh, calculator and you can get the uh, what is the correct answer. Thereafter, I will uh, explain then you need to find out time taken by 4,000th unit. In order to find out time taken by 4,000th unit, you have to find out total time taken by 4,000 and need to be deducted total time taken by 3,999 unit. Therefore, time taken by, if I say about time taken by, 4,000 unit, unit, it will be equal to time taken by 4,000 units minus time taken by 3,999 unit. If you have done this one, then you can easily work out the solution, the time taken by uh, 4,000 units. Then if you want to find out the total time taken by 6,000 units, what you have to do, you have to multiply the time taken by 4,000 units to 2,000 and first 4,000 you need to take it together. Then you can take the total answer. That's how it should work out. I will just uh, you it's up to you. You have to calculate. 
the answer once you have done the calculation like that your answer should be 2975.88 the answer should be c i am not taking much time because it is very simple what you have to do first you have to calculate time required for 4000 unit how to work out that yx yx equal x power b that is the formula you need to remember then you have to work out the average time for 4000 unit then multiplied by 4000 unit then you will get the total duration for 4000 the next step total time taken by 4000 unit you need to find out that amount need to be multiplied by remaining 2000 unit then if you calculate the total calculation the answer is 2000 975.88 right that you need to work out right the third one question number right again ask to explain right give me a second i will explain it again i think you already you should have learned those uh, facts because in advance now example y x equal a x power b this is a learning curve formula now first what you i, I will take in a separate excel sheet and show it to you <laughs> then it will be much clearer but these are not big issues because we have already learned this uh, concepts already okay i think you can see the screen okay now equation is uh y x equal a x power b power b right this is the formula now first what you have to do you have to find out time taken by 4000 unit time taken by 4000 unit you need to find out therefore you have to work out yx equal a x power b now y x equal y 4000 4000 units a is the time taken by first output that is eight hours x is how many units First 4,000 unit, 4,000 power log learning rate, log learning rate is 0 0.8, 80% mean 0 0.8 divided by log 2. Right. Then you will get the answer, then you will get the average time per unit. Then you will get the Y4000 average average time for 4000 units you will get units then total time for 4000 unit total time for 4000 units equal units equal you have to my multiply by 4000 the answer i am not calculate the answer into 4000 units then you will get the value for 4000 right then the correct answer is there correct answer is on c uh, then uh, 4000 thereafter you have to find out the time taken uh, give me a second i will show it to you Right, I will show you because the answer you should be obtained. Then uh, we have to obtain 4,001 to 6,000. Another 2,000 units are there. You have to work out uh, remaining 2,000 because time taken by the time taken by 4,001 to 6,000 units you need to work out. That's how it should be looked like. Right, you have to work out then uh, 4,001 to Next one, 4,001 to, one to 6,000 units. 
fixed time. If they will take the fixed time. How you can work out that one? You have to work out time taken by taken by 3,000, sorry, 4,000 units already there. Take 3,999 units. Then you have the time taken by 4,000 unit. Then what you have to do, time taken by 4,000 unit, unit equal time taken by 4,000 units multiplied minus by time taken by 3,999 units. Now you have the then time taken by 4,000 unit time is available, then it should be multiplied by 2,000 unit. Then you can take the total time of 6,000. Y equal X power B. So equation I learned was Y equal X power B. Put the Y equal X power B to my TN. Now Y X mean if you, manu if you manufacture X number of output, what is the average time? Y X mean now this y x y mean average time uh if you manufacture x number of output y x mean assume if you have manufactured 4000 unit average time per unit if we manufacture manufacture x number of output number of output Right. You can either say y equal x power b, it's okay. Yx I have mentioned, if you manufacture x number of output, this is the average time. Right? Always remember it's the average time. If you want to make it a total time, you have to multiply by the number of units. Right. right. Hope you have understood. Buddha, you have to work it out and see uh, with the available limited time. It may not be able to take much detail. I will, uh, if you want, I will share the calculation in the chat. Right. The answer should be 2,975.88 hours. You can work it out. The next one, 1 1.3. Look at 1.3. Right. If you want to or the want to answer, I will share it later separately. Is it clear? So please share the calculation. I think you. It seems like you are looking at the calculation at the first time. But anyway, uh, I will take the time and show it to you again. Right. I will show share. Actually, y x equal a x power b i'm showing now by first i'll average average time for 4000 units equal 8 into x is 4000 power log learning rate log 0 0.8 8 divided by log Now you can take the answer. I'll say y equal eight into into four thousand uh, power log point eight divided by log two. You will receive an answer minus minus point three two one approximately. And if you calculate the answer, you will say y x y four thousand equal. Remember average time y four thousand equal. If you work out this amount, uh, four thousand power log point eight 
divide by log 2 log 2 you will get an answer minus 0.3219 kya decimals gana kenna puluwa right into 8. You will receive an answer equal once you have multiplied this equation by 4000 equal to 0.55 approximately. I will say 0 0.55 hours. This is the average time per unit if we manufacture 4000 units right then you want to find out the total time for total total time for 4000 units units equal 0.55 i have rounded it to the nearest one into into 4000 units 4000 then you will receive the total time. Total time. Get the value will leave. Point five five into four thousand. Two thousand two hundred hours will be taken. Hours for the production of four thousand units. And of course, four thousand hours will be taken. Uh, 4,000 unit will be taken 2,200 hours, right? Then, uh, if you look at about uh, 4,001 to 6,000, you need to find it out. Therefore, you have to find out what is the Y 3,999. Nine. Equal same equation, same formula, 8 hours into into 3,999 hour log 0.8 divided by log 2. Right. Then you will get the answer quickly. You can get the answer. Uh, You can work out quickly. Log point log point a divide by log two is log point eight divide by log two minus point three two one nine power three thousand nine hundred ninety nine. Again, it is 0.55 in nearest round. We go 0.55 hours again, hours. And total time, time, you can multiply uh, 0.55 hours into 3,999. Then total time equal 3,999 into 0.55. It is, uh, if you work out, 2,199.45. Now you can see from 3,999 to 4,000, there's a gap. Therefore, time taken by, time taken by 4,000 unit, unit equal 2,200 minus 2,199. It is 0.55. Therefore, total time, total time, to be equal now we are calculating first first 4000 units first 4000 units we have the time 2200 right balance 2000 units because you have to calculate the total time for 6000 units therefore 0.55 multiplied by 2000 Right. 
the answer should be around 3,300, uh, 3, right? What is the answer? You'll see the answer. All right, due to the rounding of error, it might be 2,900. So approximately, that is the way to calculate because I have rounded it off as a, in the Excel, just that's why it is a little bit different. If you calculate in the real decimal, decimals value which you have extracted, it's exactly 2,975, it will be. Right. That is the way of working it out. Clear? Hope you have understood. Third one, because we have spent much time on that, which of the following should be categorized as environmental failure caused by an airline company? Now, there are three uh, I scenarios given. Now you have to work out what are the uh, environmental costs. This is the environmental management accounting. Compensation payments to residents living close to airport for noise pollution caused by the aircraft. Definitely, it is part of it is part of uh, environmental management negative impact, environmental failure cost, right? Therefore, that is correct. Air pollution due to the airline's carbon emission from the aircraft engine. Definitely, again, it is the environmental failure cost. Penalty is paid by the airline because there are some in internal failure cost and external failure cost. The given three scenarios, we have to consider as an external failure cost of the environmental management account. Therefore, we have to highlight the answer should be B. All three you can consider as environmental failure cost, right? Therefore, you have to consider that is the that as the correct answer. Right. Answer B should be the correct answer. Question 1.4. Now, this is related to life cycle costing. When you calculate the life cycle costing, the most important thing, life cycle costing, you will look at entire life cycle. You have five different life cycles, right? Five different years. Answer is given. Five different life cycles. Five different life cycles mean uh, design and development phase, introduction phase, growth, maturity, and decline. Therefore, in the life cycle costing suitable for a product which is in a highly competitive market or environment which has a shorter life cycle. Therefore, under such situation, it is suitable to use life cycle costing. In life cycle costing, when we calculate, when we calculate the total, uh, you can work out, based on that, I will give the answer, uh, 2,967, 967. Can decimal record exactly in that? Right, uh, 2,975, okay, building. Uh, then uh, if you go to the uh, next one, you have to work out the total life cycle cost. Take the total unit manufactured and sold during the period is available and total cost incurred during the period. Now, when you are going to calculate this life cycle cost, you have to take the total cost incurred over the life cycle need to be divided by total output produced in the life cycle. In that particular period, even though there are some R&D cost, you can't expend. You have to consider in the unit cost. All the cost incurred during the life cycle, you need to consider in the cost calculation. Okay, I will show you the quick calculation of this one without taking much time. Right. Uh, research and development, 20 million. R&D, R&D was 20 million. R&D was 20 million. Then, what else? Uh, I'll take warranty cost. Warranty cost. If you take during the period total warranty cost, will be uh, 5 and 8 million was their total period, total duration, total warranty cost 8 million. And there's a dismantling cost. Value is uh, how much? 
value is 3 million dismantling. Cost another 3 million there. And production cost also there. Production cost. Production cost, there are four years, sorry, three years in production. Year one, year two, and year three. Year one, production cost per unit is 50, right? 50 units and 50 per unit and 40,000 units manufactured, then 2 million. Year two, 40 rupees per unit, 40 rupees per unit and manufactured 100,000. 100,000. Year three, 40 rupees per unit manufactured 60,000 units. Those are the total, then you can get the total. If we take the total, then you can get the total life cycle cost. Total life cycle cost. This is the total life cycle cost. Now you have to get the total output for the life cycle, total output. Total output for life cycle. Total output, if you take the total first year, 40,000, second year, 100,000, third year, 60,000, total 200,000. Therefore, life cycle cost per unit, 39.4 million divided by 200,000. You can go back and see what is your answer given in the paper. It is 197, answer is A. Answer is A. Right, okay. The next one, 1.5. The following statement have been made environmental about the environmental cost accounting. Right. Number one, the majority of environmental costs are already captured within the typical organization's accounting system. The difficulty lies in identifying them. That is correct. Because we have already captured, but it is difficult to identify them. Number two, input-output analysis divides material flows within an organization into three categories. Material, inflow, material flows, system flows, and delivery and disposal flows. That is totally wrong. That is, if we categorize in material, system, and delivery and disposal, it is not input-output analysis, right? Therefore, it is totally wrong. Only first statement is the correct answer, right? You can remember when we are going to discuss uh, environmental management accounting, you will learn about input-output analysis that will input, you will look at uh, how input being used as a output and uh, work in progress and as a waste and which is not accounted for. This is referring, number two, referring the flow cost accounting, not the uh, input-output analysis. Therefore, number two is wrong. Therefore, correct statement is one only. The answer should be A, one only. One point four answer is one hundred ninety seven. Please make sure you will follow because it is wasting father's time. One point six. Which of the following is an advantage of non participative budgeting as compared to participative budgeting? There are two approach, bottom-up approach and top-down budgets. You will learn in budgeting. Now, which of the following is an advantage of non-participative budgeting? That means bot bottom-up or top-down budget. Top down budget. Top-level managers will prepare the budget. It increases more than no, totally round. It is less time consuming. Yes, since there are no much involvement in the parties, top management will decide it and impose it to the down level. Therefore, it is less time consuming. Therefore, answer should be B. Yes, thank you. Answer should be B. It is less time consuming. 1.6 answer is 1. B, it is less time consuming. 
uh, then the following are all steps in the implementation of target costing process for a product. Remember in target costing, first what we are going to set at the inception, whatever the things, when you're going to calculate target cost, we have to set what? Selling price. You need to set the selling price as first, right? Therefore, while looking at four answers, you can skip A and B. You can look at only C and D. Once you sell in the required selling price, what is the next step? You have to set the required profit because thereafter you will subtract the required profit from the selling price. Then you will calculate the target cost. Right? right. Based on the given information, calculate the target cost, calculate the estimate current, set the required profit, set the selling price, calculate the target cost gap. By looking at these five steps, first one, set the selling price. Then second, set the required profit. Then calculate target cost, right? Thereafter, you have to calculate the estimated cost based on the product specification. Then calculate the target cost gap. The correct order there in answer C. Correct order there in answer C. Putha, this will be uploaded to CEA website. So many times people are asking whether this will be uploaded because that is your nature. You are always postponing some time. That is not, if you have time, you have to allocate the time because anyway, this will be uploaded. Right. There is no issue. You can watch later, but don't delay. Right. That is answer for 1.7 is C. Uh, 1.8. You can look at 1.8. This is relevant to the variance analysis. Trans Lanka PLC PLP uh, manufacturing and electrical equipment for global market and establish a standard costing system. The standard material requirement per unit was 3 kilogram and expected price was 200. Okay. Subsequently, the company identified that the price of 200 per kilogram was not practical and the price will be increased to 250 rupees. During the period, company manufactured 4,000 units and the cost of material was 1,920,000 and 8,000 kilogram was used. What they are asking, material planning variance, material cost planning variance. When you are going to calculate material cost planning variance, what is the original cost you have to incur? And what you intended to incur, and what is the revised cost? The difference between original and revised cost we call planning variance, which is not controllable by yourself. You can't control it. Okay, I will show you the working. Uh, I think you have already done this one, therefore, no need to work it out again. But I will show you now. You want to calculate uh, material cost planning variance. Now, if you look at about the original, based on the original standard, original, you required material 3 kilograms. Price was 200, right? Price was 200. This is the original scenario. Then you have to revise revised revised it but they have not revised about the quantity quantity remain three kilograms three kilograms price changed to 15 yes price changed to 50 during the period they have manufactured 4000 units according to the original stand what should be the material cost if manufactured, manufactured 4,000 units. 4,000 units. Therefore, when you manufacture 4,000 units, what should be your original cost? Original cost should be 4,000 units. Each require 3 kilogram. The cost of material would be 200. Original cost should be 2.4 million. But with the revised situation, revised cost will be 
you have manufactured 4,000, each requires 3 kilograms, but the price will be 250. Now it is 3 million. Since you have revised the standard, what has happened? Material cost variance at first by 600. Look at whether that answer is there. 600,000 adverse variance should be there. It's there, right? Then this is material planning variance. Planning variance. Next one asked about material, material usage operating variance. Usage operating variance. Actual scenario, actual. Now we'll see the actual scenario. Actual scenario, they have used 8,000 kilograms of material for 4,000. That means two kilograms each. Right? <laughs> Cost of material was 1,920,000. Okay, 1,920,000 was the cost of 8,000 kilograms. That means actual cost 240. Now, you asked to calculate, what, is, what you asked to calculate, material usage operating variance. Therefore, you have to calculate revised usage, revised usage minus actual usage into revised price. Revised usage, you can work out. Uh, revised usage, how much? Three kilogram, it is remain same. Three kilogram into 4,000. Minus actual usage, 8,000 kilograms. Minus 8,000, actual 8,000. Right. What is the revised price? Revised price is two fifty. One million favorable variance is there. Therefore, answer should be six million adverse and one million favorable. If you have properly worked it out, look at what is the answer. People are saying answer is B. We'll see. Answer is B. Yes, six million material planning variance adverse and one million favorable material operating variance. Answer should be B. One point nine. The following circumstance may arise in relation to launch of a new product. You are launching a new product. Demand is re relatively inelastic. There is significant economies of scale. The firm wishes to discourage new entrants to the market. The product life cycle is particularly short. Which of the above circumstances favor of penetration pricing policy? Pen what is the penetration pricing policy? Penetration pricing policy means you are charging lower price, lower price to grab the market. Therefore, if, if you want to charge a lower price, if the demand is Relative inelastic mean your revenue will fall, your profit will fall. It, you can't reduce uh, the price. Uh, when you are launching a penetration pricing policy, your correct answer should be what? The, there should be a significant economies of scale. You can offer the product at a lower price. Therefore, point number two is correct. The firm wishes to discourage new entrants to the market. Is it correct or wrong? Yes. When you have economies of a scale, you will offer a product at a lower price than the competitor's production price some situation. Therefore, you will discourage new interest. That's why we are charging lower price at the inception. Therefore, third one is also correct. Fourth one, the product life cycle is particularly short. No, product life cycle is longer. If it is a mobile phone, it is a product life cycle is shorter. Then you have to charge a premium price. That's why market skimming pricing is in place. Therefore, answer two and three is correct. One and four is wrong. Therefore, answer should be where yeah, it says answer should be A. Two and three only. Two and three only. Answer A should be taken as the correct answer. The final one. Then you can clear up whether how much you have got out of this one. 
what is an attainable standard? There are four types of standard you might learn. Current standard, ideal standard. So thereafter, you will learn about uh, uh, hist uh, we call historical standard that we will learn basic call as a basic standard. Now we have to see what, what is the attainable standard. Attainable standard means you will consider all other conditions that prevail to some machine breakdown, system labor absenteeism, normal loss will be considered when setting the standard. They are achievable and not easy to achieve, not difficult to achieve as well, too difficult to achieve. Therefore, attainable standard means the standard which includes some allowance for losses, waste and inefficiencies, it rep represents the level of performance which is attainable under efficient operating condition, efficient operating condition. Therefore, answer should be B. Again, answer should be B, right? Now, we have done our first part and we have gone through what are the areas which we need to look at and question yeah, six out of 10, some people are in answers and no, you have to practice this kind of illustration in order to familiarize with the content. <clears throat> right. Even I am not in a good, uh, not feeling well, but I'm trying to make it smoother. Right. We will move to section number two. This section uh, I have given in, uh, we have going to discuss in a uh, great uh, Activity-based costing related area, it has been tested and when we are using activity-based costing, how it looks like and how to tackle with this kind of illustration. Now, if we can read the illustration quickly and we'll see the suggested solution. I'm not going, guys, I'm not going to work it out in detail. I will show you the answer and how it need to be worked out and Excel sheet also will share. Wuhan Tech Private Limited produces three product types of confectionaries. Uh, types of confectionaries, sweetie, pebbles, and cake. The following information have been estimated for the upcoming production cycle for the three products. Sweetie, pebbles, and cake, selling price given, material cost, direct labor cost per unit, 40, 80, and 120, and maximum demand or capacity also they have given. The estimated production overhead of 6 million was made up with the following activities. You can see three types of activities given and their cost and cost driver also given by themselves, right? Now it is very easy to work out or tackle this one, right? Okay. Uh, then the following information were collected by the account assistant instructed by the management accountant the management accountant considering giving a proposal to management committee of implementing activity-based costing, right? Number of production runs, direct labor hours, and machine hours per unit is given. Required. Prepare notes to the management committee on the following. First one, a profitability statement for each product if overheads are absorbed using direct labor hours as the absorption basis. Right now you can see direct labor hours per unit also being given. You have fixed overhead of 6 million. Now you have to calculate the unit cost and you have determined the profitability. Yeah, we will share the marking scheme. <clears throat> Once we is done, we will share the marking scheme. Now you can see, now you have the next one, the profit is when if WPL use the ABC for allocating overhead. Right, we can quickly work it out and I will show you the answer. I, now, in this illustration, I have worked out selling price are 300, 350, and 400. What I have done, I have deducted material, cost, and direct labor. Then your total budgeted fixed production overhead is 6 million. Now, you will absorb fixed production overhead based on direct labor hours. Feed required one direct labor hour, pebbles required two direct labor hours, and cake required three direct labor hours. The estimated production also given, then based on that, we I have calculated total budgeted direct labor hours. Total budgeted direct labor hours are 200,000. Then if I divide 6 million by 200,000, it is 30 rupee per direct labor hour. I hope you can see. 
30 rupee per direct labor hour. Then if I add 30 rupee per direct labor hour, 31 hour, therefore 30 rupee I have deducted. Here if they require 2 hours, then it is 60. Cake required 3 hours, then it is 90. This is how the profitability looks like based on absorption costing. Now, if we apply ABC, how it looks like? Now, this information will remain same except this information. This will change. Because we will absorb the overhead based on activity consumption. Now, we will see how are we going to do that. <coughs> First one, selling price remains same. Material cost direct labor remains same. Now, they, we have identified three different activities. I will show you it again. Three different activities. That is production setup, machine running, quality checking cost. Those are the three types of activities. Now, we will see how we will allocate these costs among the activity. At first activity, production setup cost. Look at the calculation. Total production setup cost 2.8 million. Cost driver number of production trucks. Number of production trucks, if you take the total, it will be 700 production trucks carried out. 400 from Sweetie, 225 from Weber, 75 from K. Then cost per production run 4,000. Then take the production run at 4,000 in Sweetie, if you work out this one, 4,000 into 400 production run for Sweetie. Then cost will be 1.6 million in total cost. Right? They are manufacturing 20,000 units per unit cost calculation. What I have done, 1.6 million divided by number of units. Then I have got 8. That's how it works 80 rupees. Labels, they are using 225 uh, production runs. Then 4,000 needs to be multiplied by 225. Then this is the amount to be allocated to pebbles to manufacture 30,000 units. Then 900,000 will be divided among the 30,000 units. Then 900,000 divided by 30,000, then you can get 30, right? Then finally, take 4,000 into 75, then it will be divided by 40,000 unit of production, then you can get 7 rupees and 50 cents. That is how I have worked out this production setup cost. Okay, clear. Then machine running cost. If you look at about the machine running cost, when you're going to work out the machine running cost, total machine running cost was 2.2 million. Cost driver number of machine hours. We have spent total budgeted machine hours so as we 60,000, paper 60, and take 40,000. Then total 160,000 machine hours we have budgeted. For 160,000 machine hours, we have budgeted 2.2 million machine running cost. Cost per machine hour is 13 rupees and 75 cents. Hope you have understood that one. Then when you do that, then you can get the total value 13.75 per machine hour. Sweet, you, will you use how much? How many machine hours? 13.75 into 3 hours. Then they need to be allocated 41 rupees and 25 cents. Then papers they need to allocate for 2 hours. Then they have 27 rupees and 50 cents. Cake 1 hour, 13 rupees and 75 cents. If you go and see, that is how it has been allocated. <laughs> Quality checking time, last one. Quality checking time. You can see quality checking time budget at cost 1 million. It is allocated based on direct labor hours. Then a number of direct labor hours budgeted 200,000 total cost is 1 million. Therefore, cost per hour is 5 rupees per direct labor hour. If you look at Swede require 1 hour, then 5 rupees. Labor required 2 hours, then 10 rupees. And cake required 3 hours, it is 15 rupees. 5, 10, and 15. That's how it works out. Clear? Now you can see each product, how much we have allocated. Based on absorption costing, 
we have allocated 30 rupees for sweetly, but based on activity based costing, we have to allocate 126 rupees and 25 cents. If we compare both method, we want to compare if we compare both method, you will identify the difference, right? I'll take sweetie pebbles and cake. Those are the three products. Okay, I will take this side to make an analysis. As per absorption costing, how much? Profit as per absorption costing. Profit after absorption costing. If you look at about the absorption costing, Sweetie reported 2 million profit. Pebbles, 2.7 million. Cake is 400,000, right? They have generated low over profit. Now we will see based on activity-based costing, profit per ABC. Sweetie, they have only 75,000. Tables, their profit declined 2.475. Cake, they have manufactured produced 2.5. Now, if you look at if you look at the total profit, 5.1 million. Total profit 5.1 million. We take the total as well. There's no difference. Total ke if you take the total. If you take the total, there's no issue with the total. Both are same. But the problem here, if you look at the, the difference here, profit being overstated by CT by 1.925 million. Here also profit is overstated by 225. And what has happened? Profit being understated in K by 2 million 120, 150. What has actually happened, even though uh, the inefficiencies in sweet and pebble being transferred to the cake division, if you take the total, if you take the summation, there is no effect. But inefficiencies of sweet and pebbles transferred to the cake division, cake product. That is the thing that we call cross subsidization that you need to keep in mind that you might have learned already. Right, that is for an understanding. Now you have prepared the profit statement to understand that part. We will look at what is the next requirement which you need to address. Okay, we'll look at the next requirement. Now, if maximum demand of pebbles increased by 10,000 units and direct labor hours restricted to the current volume, determine the optima, optimum production plan and overall profitability for months given. Right. Now, in activity-based costing, the cost will vary with activity volume. That means it's kind of a variable nature. Now, look at looking at the situation, now these are the profit based on ABC. These are the number of direct labor hours are restricted in supply because total limited to current hours, 200,000 hours are available. By looking at the situation, highest profitability is given by pebbles and second highest is given by K. Now you need to decide the priority. Therefore, now pebbles demand increased by 10,000 units. Therefore, their demand originally was how many, how many units? 20, sorry, 30,000. Now it went up to 40,000. Now you have to prioritize. Maximum available hours, 200,000 hours are available. Out of that, <coughs> pebbles give highest profit per labor hour, 41 rupees and 25 cents per hour. Therefore, pebbles, you can give the priority because it gives the highest profit per hour. Then, Second priority goes to cake, they will give 21 rupees and 25 cents. If resource available, you will allocate to sweetie. Now I will work out. 
Those priority calls to Pebbles, 80,000 hours will be allocated to Pebbles, then 120,000 available. Balance goes to cake because their production, it requires 120,000 hours to maximize their demand. Maximum demand, it's their 40,000 unit each required directly above us. 120,000 being used. Then there's no any balance hours available to allocate among the cake, uh, among the sweet. Therefore, pebbles and cake will be fully manufactured. Then if you look at about the total calculation, Pebbles, 3.3 million is the profit. K, 2.5 million profit. Total, 5 million 850 is the total profitability that can be earned. Right, hope you have understood about that activity-based costing and how to maximize the profitability based on the, if the resources are limited, what you need to do, you have to find out where the profit will be maximized uh, based on limited, the kind of single factor, single limited factor analysis to be done. You have to maximize the profit uh, per limiting factor. Here, what we have done is the same thing, uh, what we supposed to do. Right. That is question number, yeah, any questions? Yes, answer sheet will be shared. Right. Shall we move to the next illustration? All right. We'll calculate this is the revenue maximization illustration. If you have any question, let me know. Because you need to concentrate, Puta, and you need to work out because now you are preparing for the final examination. Because I, I am not going to one by one, like, literally we can't explain because we have to familiarize with the work feed and uh, uh, if you have properly understood the context, then you can easily adapt because you need to pass this examination, right? Okay, I'm going to discuss this illustration. Hugo Boss Private Limited HBP is a cosmetic company that produces perfume. The perfume market is very competitive and subject to frequent changes. The company is planning to launch a new perfume to attract young gentlemen while differentiating the product. Okay. Right. The company is planning to launch a perfume. I know that. The data for the forthcoming period are as follows. Direct material 1250, direct labor 100 rupee, variable production no weight 50, fixed production no weight 50, selling price is 2500, and sales quantity 10,000. Right, those information are available. <coughs> then the planned selling price of a bottle of perfume is determined by considering the unique features of the perfume. Information from the marketing division at HPP suggests that for every 100 increase in the selling price, the customer demand would reduce by 500 bottles. And that for every 100 decrease in selling price, the customer demand would increase by 500 bottles, right? That is the relationship in demand and price and demand. So will the uh, paper totally different from this paper. This is a mock paper, guys. I can't explain it, though. I don't know what kind of paper will be tested. Right. Now, what you require to do, calculate the revenue that HBP would earn if the selling price of a bottle of perfume was set to that profit would be maximized for the forthcoming budget period. Discuss the importance of market skimming and market penetration pricing strategy when launching a new product by HVP. Right. We will work out. I will give you an illustration. Now, this is a profit maximization illustration. And when you're looking at the information, you can look at the variable production cost. And selling price is set at 2500 Okay. We will see how are we going to deal with this illustration. Right now, uh, based on the given information, okay, I'm taking the information as it is. 
direct material. Now you have to calculate profit maximizing price. You have learned profit will be maximized. In economics also you have learned profit will be maximized when maximized when MR equal to MC. Have you learned? Marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. Right. Hope you have understood. Yes. Right. When MR equal to MC. Now here we have we have to calculate where when when it uh, MR equal to MC. Now it, it is not being provided. We have to work out. First, we will take out MR. MR is a differentiation of TR, total revenue. How to calculate? First, we will calculate MR function. Calculation of MR. MR, marginal revenue. We are going to calculate that. When you are going to calculate MR, first, how to calculate total revenue? Total revenue. How to work out? Total revenue equals price we call P into quantity agree P into Q total revenue equal price into quantity P into Q. Hope you have understood. Therefore, first price equation P equal a minus bq b a minus bq price equation we have already learned a is the price that is maximum price which you can charge with the to demand equal to zero there's no demand at that price so based on this b is the slope you have learned in economics already you have learned in pricing as well so b equal b kilakiyane b equal change or change in price divided by change in quantity quantity if you look at the illustration they have provided this information if you change price by 100 right if you change the price b equal price by 100 rupee Demand will fall by 500. Therefore, B equal 0.2. Right? Therefore, you can write price equation P equal A minus 0.2 Q. Now, you want to find out what is A. A can not. You have to find out that one. Right. Therefore, to find out A, what you have to do? Based on the given information, when when P equal the current price two thousand five hundred, Q equal ten thousand. When P equal two thousand five hundred, Q equal ten thousand. Then I will substitute P equal A minus point. Q. Therefore, P mean 2500 equal A minus 0.2. Q is 10,000. Q is 10,000. If you work out cross uh, summation, A should equal to 4500. Right. Now I can write my price equation P equal to 4,500 minus 0 0.22, 0 0.2Q, 4,500 minus 0.2Q. That is price, right? Inverse demand value. Right. <coughs> then, you have to calculate the uh, total revenue. Therefore, TR, I say that TR equal P into Q. 
Therefore, now T R equal my P is 4500 minus 0.2 Q. Now, will be multiplied by Q. Then your total revenue function, you can write it down. Uh, you can write it down. T R equal 4500 Q minus 0.2 Q square. 0.2 Q square. Now you have a total revenue function. In order to calculate MR, what you need to do, you have to differentiate total revenue function into MR. Therefore, you have to differentiate differentiate TR function. First differentiation. When you are going to differentiate PR function, what we have to do, TR, we can MR, MR equal, now 4500 Q power 1. So Q, 4500 Q power 1, what we will do, 4500 Q power 1, 1 will be multiplied by 1, multiplied by 1 into Q, 1 minus Q power, 1 minus 1, right, so then Q 0, minus, right, point two two square the end, Q square the end is all, it should be multiplied by 2 into q square minus 1. If we can rewrite it, then you can get the MR function, MR at 4500 q power 0, q power, if any power is 0, it is 1. Then 4500 minus 0.2 into 2 times mean 0.4. Q power 2 minus 1 can be power 1, that means Q. Therefore, your MR function remains as 4500 minus 0.4 Q. Now it is done. You have found out. Now you have to find out what is the MC. MC you can easily find out. You have to take the marginal cost. MC. MC function. Now, if you go to the information given in the PCS, in, in the uh, paper, direct material 1,250, direct labor 100, variable cost 150, you need not to consider about the fixed overhead. Therefore, all these three, direct material, direct labor, and the variable production cost constitute marginal cost 1,250, 1,350, and 1,400. Therefore, your variable marginal cost is 1,400. No need to work it out. Marginal cost itself given. Marginal cost equal 1,400. Marginal cost is 1,400. Now, you have MR, you have MC. Now, what you want to do, now you want to calculate when it is profit will be maximized. Therefore, Profit will be maximized, maximized when MC equal to MR, MC equal to MR. Therefore, if you look at about MC is 1,400 equal MR is 4,500 minus 0.4 Q. Then 0.4 Q equal 4,500 minus 1,400. 0.4 Q equal 3,100. Q equal 3,100 divided by 0.4. Now Q can 3,100 divided by 0.4. 7,750 Q, 7,750 units. 
then P, you can use the pricing formula. Then P equal, you have already calculated 4,500 minus 0.2Q. 0.2Q. If you work out P equal 4,500 minus 0.2 into Q is 7,750. Then you will receive the answer 4,500 minus 0.2 into 7,750. P is 2,950. This is how profit maximizing price will be. Why don't we consider FC for taking MC marginal cost? FC is not increment, uh, not an incremental cost. When it is output increasing, FC will won't increase. Marginal cost mean when you're producing one output, uh only as the revenue they are, when you determine the optimal revenue you have to multiply the price and quantity first you have to put up you have to find out these two figures first right profit maximizing revenue then you have to find out total optimum quantity and optimum price you need to find out this cause why we have not considered fixed cost won't increase with the output marginal cost mean cost will increase when the output increase or decrease If they are the revenue for the you, uh, uh, I, I can't understand some questions, guys. You are raising now. What the patient asked to work out profit maximizing price and quantity? Give me a second. Profit would be maximized, that is the profit maximizing price and quantity. The calculate the revenue, earn a selling price of okay. Now you can price and quantity, you have already found out. You can calculate this is the profit maximizing price and quantity. Therefore, profit maximizing revenue, maximizing revenue will be 7,750 into 2,950. The profit maximizing revenue is 2,022,862,500. That is the answer. If you can look at whether it is the maximum profit with compared to the current level. Current level, you are selling how much? Current revenue. Current revenue. Current revenue, and you can look at whether it is maximized or not. 10,000 units you are selling. And what is the total revenue? This is the profit maximizing revenue. 7,750 units. You are selling at 2,950 each. 22,862. You can see whether your profit is maximized or not. Now, this is the prop, this is the revenue. You can deduct less. Less. Variable cost. Variable cost. If it is a profitability. Variable cost is how much? 1,400 each. Then, 1,400 into number of units. 7,750. Then, take the profitability. Net or can you can say contribution because if contribution maximized, profit will be maximized. Then you can current level, current level, current level revenue must be much high. Revenue, revenue currently are selling 2500 each, 10,000 units, 25 million, then less. Variable cost. Variable cost. 1,400 each or 10,000 unit, 14 million. If you calculate the net profit, it is 11 million. What has happened? Your 11 million profit went up to 12 million, 12,500. Profit has been increased. Right. That means you have understood, right? Next one, part 
B of the question. Discuss the importance of market skimming and market penetration pricing strategy when launching a new product by HBP. Right. Now, when market skimming pricing main, you are charging a premium price on the product. Assume Apple is launching a new version of product, new version of Apple iPhone. Then they will charge a high price. Unique features are there. They are targeting high-end earners. Therefore, at initial phase, because they are trying to recover their cost as much as possible during the initial phase. Therefore, they will charge a premium price, high price. That will call market skimming pricing. <coughs> because subsequently, competitors will come into the market. Then their profitability will dilute. Therefore, initial phase when they are launching the product, they need to catch up more profit as such as much as possible because their duration is very shorter. Product life cycle. Market skimming, sorry, penetration pricing. You are offering a lower product. You are going to maximize the profit while acquiring more market share. Therefore, you will set the price at low level and you will uh, discourage new entrants since you are keeping a low profit margin, new entrants will be discouraged. Then you can get the more market share and new entrants will be discouraged. But if market is skimming pricing, you will keep a higher profit margin, new entrants will be encouraged. When new entrants come, your profit will dilute. Right demand will dilute. Your profit will shrink. That is the two strategies. Therefore, you have to look at whether the product is price sensitive, you have to follow market penetration pricing. When the product has a demand as a inelastic demand, then you better you have to go to market skimming pricing. If you charge higher price, you can maximize your profit. That is the answer for part B. Hope you have understood. Right, next one, I have, if uh, when I'm going to uh, uh, draw, it may take a longer time, but I will show you the answer. And how decision tree, this is coming under risk and uncertainty, and decision tree will be constructed. Generally, when we are going to construct a decision tree, it should be start from a decision node. It's a square. It should be flow from left to right. When you're drawing the decision tree, it should flow from left to right. Right. From square, then it should flow to left to right. Word. Now we'll read the illustration first. Super City Private Limited SCL is the food manufacturer in Horana and preferred choice among the rural communities in the area. SCL planning to expand its presence beyond the current territory. They have an option to sell through an agent while paying a commission of rupees 5 million per annum. They have an option to sell via an agent while paying 5 million per annum. The expected additional sales variable cost and their probabilities are as follows. You can see best case, most likely, and worst case, the expected sales and probabilities also given. And variable costs also, there are three scenarios. It can be 50%, 60%, or 70% with the probabilities of 40%, 40%, and 20%. Right. Before selling through an agent, CL has conducted the market research while spending rupees 4 million to identify the potential market with high attractiveness and sell direct. Right, you can do a market research. The research revealed that 80% of positive results for the direct selling with 300 million, 200 million, and 100 million sales with 30, 50, and 20% respectively in best case, most likely, and worst case scenarios and option to abandon it. Again, you can conduct the market research and results are positive. Then you can decide whether you are going to sell direct or abandon it. Right. If the result is negative, SC has an option to sell online for few regions with the expected additional sales 
of 180 and 40 million with 20%, 40%, and 40% the best case, most likely and worst case scenario. Otherwise, they can abandon the option. That means each scenario, if you have make a preference, choice, that is where you have to make a decision. Wherever that choice is there, you have to introduce a decision not. Uh, the setting up of online platform will cost rupees 1 million. Okay. The variable cost of direct selling will be 55%, while online selling it would be 50%. You have to keep that in mind. You are the management accountant of HCL and you are required to advise the management on the following. What you have to do? You have to evaluate the best course of action financially for the forthcoming quarter for HCL using a decision tree. We have to uh, demonstrate we are a demo decision tree, whether which option should be selected. Okay, I will show you the workout in the decision tree. I'll show you the illustration. Right. It looks like this. I will uh, expand this one. Okay, first branch. Now, you, if you sell through an agent, you have to spend 5 million, right? That cost is there. Then there's an option. There's a best case scenario, most likely, and worst case scenario. In the best case scenario, Again, there are three options. Variable cost can be 50%, 60%, or 70%. In the best case scenario, your revenue will be 200 million. Right? Then variable cost 50. Then contribution will be 50%. Then 40% is the probability. Then 40 million will be the expected profit. Then variable cost can be 60 then your contribution will be 40%. Then 200 million, 40%, probability, point four, again 40%, 32 million. Variable cost can be 70% with the probability of 20%. Again, around 200 million, you have the revenue, 30% is the contribution, the probability will be 20%, that 12 million. If you add all together, the expected value will be 84 million in the best case scenario, but we have not calculated the total expected value here, 84. Okay. Most likely scenario also, your revenue will be 150 million you expected. Same scenario, variable cost can be 50, 60, and 70. The total expected value here also 63 million. And Third one, worst case scenario, your revenue will be 50 million. 50 million into variable cost 50% means 7, uh, 25 million to 40%, that is 10 million. Variable cost can be 60, then contribution will be 40%. Variable cost 70 means your contribution will be 30%. Then worst case scenario, you may earn expected value of 21 million. Now you want to see there are three branches, 30% best case, most likely 40%, worst case 30%, all together 100%. Then you will calculate the expected value, 84 into 30% plus 63 into 0.4 and 21 into 0.3. The expected value of this branch becomes 56.7 before deducting 5 million. If you deduct that 5 million, if you sell to an agent, you can expect 51.7 million as net profit for this branch itself. That is there. That is what. The other option, you could conduct the research, right? Once you have conducted the research, you have to spend 4 million. That is a cost. The result can be positive or either negative. If it is positive, you can sell direct or you can abandon it. That means you have to introduce a decision point here. If you decide to sell direct, best case scenario, you can get 300 million with the probability of 45% contribution because if you direct selling, variable cost is 55%. Then contribution will be 45%. Uh, most likely scenario, revenue will be 200 then 45% contribution. 
uh, worst case scenario revenue will be 100 contribution 45 percent worst case probability 0.20 percent then all together you can expect 94.5 million expected value if you sell direct now you have to make a choice whether sell direct or abandon it in the point abandon zero if you sell direct you can have a value of 94.5 million Therefore, you will decide sell direct and expected value of 94.5 million. Uh, so, we have again divided best case, most like, and worst case in and The real one is 51, but why we did divide three variable situation that part is little bit confusing. So then, uh, if you go to the illustration and it says there are probabilities they have given in the illustration itself. Look at best case 200 million 30 percent probability, most likely 150 million 40 percent probability, worst case 50 million 30 percent probability. Variable cost can be 50 percent, 60 percent, and 70 percent with these probabilities 40, 40, 20. Therefore, if it is a best case scenario, you have 200 million revenue, but variable cost can be 50 percent, or it can be 60 percent, or it can be 70 percent. That's how it needs to be interpreted. Most likely 150 million sell with the probability of 40%, but variable cost can be 50%, 60%, or 70%. That's how it looks like. Right? That's how you need to work out. Right? I am go back. I hope it is clear. Uh, well, yeah, if it is a 1 million, yes, you have deducted. Right, direct sell. Then if you sell online, right, you have to sell online, you have to cost 1 million is there. You have to spend 1 million for selling online if the result is negative. Best case scenario, 100 million was 80 and 40. And online retailing sales, you can get 50% contribution. Then work out and multiply it by the probability. It has expected value 34 million. After deducting online sales 1 million cost of establishment, it is 33 million. Then you can decide abandon no sale. It should be sell online. Now you have to find out ultimate value here. 94.5 sell direct that is the expected value with the probability of 80%. And negative result, if you receive 20%, sell, you will sell online, you may earn 33 million, then it will be 6.6 .6 million here, altogether 82.2 million. Then with conduction, conducting research cost, you have 4 million, then expected value 78.2. When you make the decision, you will come back, if you sell through an agent, Expected value will be 56.7 minus 5 million. It is 51.7 million. If you conduct a research and sell, you will get 82.2 million minus 4. It is 78.2 million. Therefore, you will finally design, conduct a research and sell. Your expected value will be 78.2 million. Uh, so do they allocate marks decision points when the calculation calculation if they go wrong even though if you are properly make the decision based on the value they will give the mark there's no issue with that right that is for question number four right we will move to question number five uh they are after that is relevant to working capital management can you give me for a minute to plug in my laptop? Give me a second.
right guys this is relevant to working capital management guys remember in your examination 10 marks syllabus area is specifically allocated to working capital management in working capital management i will simply brief you in working capital management you have basic concept of working capital management determination of cash operating cycle thereafter receivable management in receivable management you should have discussed about what is the effect of extending credit and what is the effect of reducing credit thereafter cash management models and inventory management you should have been learned in inventory management what is the how to minimize inventory cost and inventory levels calculation when there is a bulk discount available how to determine economic quota quantity those are the areas you should have been learned in a working capital management right okay now i will move to the illustration alpha trading private limited atl is the no now totally out question when you calculate throughput account ratio if ta or throughput account ratio is below one you should not uh, undertake any product even though ranking is there but you should not undertake that's wrong right 80 percent of the sales are on the credit and balance is on cash basis the contribution per rupee of credit is 25 percent while that the cash sales is 20 percent Credit customers of the company take 75 days on average to settle invoices, right? Due to competition of the uh, in the uh, due to the competition, the company has lost market share and is looking for ways to retain its existing customers and also attract new customers. The sales director proposes an early settlement discount of 4% for the settlement made within 30 days from the date of sale. The marketing manager suggests that if the early settle discount scheme introduced, credit sale could increase by 20% and the cash operating cycle could also improve. Okay. It is expected that 75% of existing credit sales and 100% of new credit sales will be done under early settlement discount scheme. The marketing manager is also confident that the company could retain all its existing customers both cash and credit okay the finance manager has advised that offering early settlement discount scheme would increase administrative cost by eight hundred thousand each year approximately two percent of the credit sales become bad each year and written off as irrecoverable However, with the early settlement discount scheme, only 2% of credit sales, excluding early settlement credit sales, are expected to be written off. That means once you have introduced the early settlement scheme, 2% will be bad, day, but only for the customers who have not utilized the early settlement scheme. The company overdraft balance at present is 80 million and the borrowing rate is 20%. That is the cost of working capital. Assume that there are 360 days for a year. What they asked to do? Assess whether the introduction of early settlement discount scheme is financially desirable for the company. Now you have to see due to the introduction of early settlement scheme, what are the benefits they receive and what are the additional costs they have to incur. If you can justify that, you can easily work out the uh, cost and benefit. Okay, first we will look at uh, mm -hmm. uh, summarize the given information, then we it will be much easier for us. Right. Okay. <clears throat> I will share the screen. Can you see my screen? Excel sheet. Right. Okay, now uh, first we will look at the based on the arrangement. Now there are two types of sales. Cash sales and credit sales and take the total. Sales. 
present situation your total 600 if you get signed rupees million lamai rupees million rupees million sales out of the total sales 600 million give me a second with the total sales Seven, sorry. I mean, it's just total sales, 750 million. Out of that credit sales are 80% of this. Then balance, 750 minus 600, 150 is cash sales. Right. Therefore, uh, what is the net profit ratio, CS ratio? Contribution ratio. Contribution ratio cash sales 20%. Contribution ratio 20%. Sorry, cash sales 20%. Percent. Percent. And credit sales 25%. Then you can calculate the contribution. It may not be required, we'll see. 30, 180 million, you are earning at the contribution, right? Now they ask, based on the current policy, if you look at the current policy, current policy, credit sales, Credit sales six hundred million six rupees credit sales in rupees million it is six hundred million credit period credit period it is a credit period lamai credit period seventy five days. Can anyone tell me what is the data balance? Data balance. Can anyone tell me the data balance? 125. We'll see whether your answer is correct. We have sold three, 600 million for 360 days. I ask you to assume 360 days per annum. Then we have given 75 days credit. Then your data balance is 125 million rupees million 125 right that is correct your answer is correct 125 million is the data balance based on the current information what is the bad debt amount bad debt two percent of credit sales become bad debt it is 12 million right those are the current policy now based on the proposed policy proposed policy new sales will increase by 20 percent uh, with the proposal proposal with the proposed new policy total sales credit sales this 600 million remain same that is 600 million that is current sale. plus add 20% additional sales will be there. Sorry, 20% 120 million. Therefore, new credit sales will be 720 million. 720 million. Now, problem is out of the 720 million. Yes, 720 million. 75% uh, of existing customers will take settle early. Uh, there are current customers, 75% of current customers will settle 30 days, balance within 75 days. Okay. Now we have to calculate data balance, data. 
data balance we need to calculate. First, we will look at uh, settle within within 30 days. Settle within 30 days. New customers. New customers. They are 120 million. This is for 360 days. They will settle within 30 days. Uh, now we will work out 120 million new customers. This is for 360 days. They will settle within 30 days. That is 10 million. 75% of existing credit customers. 600 into 75 percent kila kya nila mai 450 million. This is for 360 multiplied by 30. That means within 30 days they will settle. Then if you can work out 450, this is for 360 days, and if they settle within 30 days, 38. new 45 million no then if you work out the value within 30 days settled debtors will be 47 rupees and 47.5 million with settled within 30 days okay, okay. then other customers settle within 75 days then now out of 600 million, 75% will be settled within 30 days. Balance 25% will settle within 75 days. 25% 25 of 600 million. 150 million, this is for 360 days, they will settle for 75. It is third. 1.25. I will take 31.25. Therefore, new data balance. Now, earlier, what is the data balance? Now, what is this is the new data balance? New data balance will be 78.75. Earlier, it was how much? Earlier data balance was 125 million. Right. Now we need to see and Bad debt. What is the bad debt amount? Bad debt. Bad debt will be 2% from the customers who are not settled within 30 days. That means 150 million customers, they are being settled within 75 days. That means bad debt will be 3 million. Right. Now you need to evaluate the cost and benefit. Benefits. First, look at the benefit. Now you can see your credit sales increased by 120 million. The entire 120 million is not the benefit for you. You have to work out 120 million. That is additional sales. What is the contribution? These are credit sales. If you sell on credit, you can earn 25% contribution. Therefore, I will say increased contribution increase contribution from increased sales increase contribution from increased sales 120 million into 25 percent right i will take a benefit 120 million into 25 percent it is 30 million that is one benefit. The second one, you can see bad debt, 12 million reduced to 3 million. Reduction of bad debt. Reduction of bad debt. Bad debt, what has happened? Bad debt reduced from 12 million, from 12 million to 3 million by 9 million. Right. In addition, what is the other benefit? Your data balance 125 million reduced to 78.75. How much? 
finance cost on data balance also will reduce reduction of finance cost on debtors how much initially you have 125 million now it is 78.75 million it should be multiplied by your cost of debt is 20 percent yes finance cost yes exactly therefore finance cost reduction you have to work out what is the amount it is 125 minus 78.75 multiplied by 20. It is 9.25. What are the cost? Cost is the early settlement cost of early settlement discount. You have given early settlement discount for how many customers? You can see 120 plus 450. Early settlement discount. Early settlement discount. Early settlement discount, how much? 120 million plus 450 million into 4%. That is the cost. Therefore, I will deduct it 570 million into 4%. 22.8 million is the cost of early settlement discount. Other than that, I don't see any other expense. Now you can take the total and you can see 25 point, uh, how much 25.45? Oh, are there any? Oh, yes, there are some additional costs. No, there's an admin cost. Yes, exactly. There's an admin cost. There's an sorry, there's an additional cost, admin cost. Admin cost 0.8 million that we have to count. Admin cost. Thank you, guys. Then if we take that one into account, 24.65 is the net benefit. Net benefit is 24.65. 24.65 is the net benefit. Net benefit. Therefore, you will recommend continue with this arrangement 24.65. Hope you have understood that one. Right. Anyway, after the Paper, I will share this Excel sheet anyway. I'll ask, I will uh, ask uh, Priya Sri Lanka to share this working sheet. Right. I hope it is okay, right? Right. Then Right. Twenty four point six five thousand. Right. statements right now we will look at what is the remaining part of illustration so 
subsequent. Right, we are looking at the paper. Explain with necessary computing whether the cash operating cycle could be improved with the introduction of early settlement discount scheme as claimed by the marketing manager. Yes, now you can see debtor balance reduced from 200, uh, uh, initially it was around 125 million, it is reduced to 78 million. That means the working capital cycle has reduced and you no, no need to have much working capital. Okay, I will show you the answer. Answer need to be modified a little bit because uh, based on this one, yes. Current situation, data balance 125 million, bank OD 80 and net data balance 45 million. After the new proposal, data balance reduce. If you consider the bank OD level as it is, your net data is minus. That means entire working capital being financed by OD facility, right? Uh, overdraft facility, it's a, a, a financing arrangement of working capital, right? That you have to keep in mind. Therefore, working capital cycle improved because you are now here 45 million mean net data 45 million mean you have to find another source to find the cash. If your cash operating cycle is positive mean, you have to find ways and means to raise working capital. Sometimes obtain some short-term loan or deep facilities. Sometimes you have to factor your data. That means cash operating cycle positive mean you are some period you are run out of cash. You have to raise some funds to bridge the gap. Right. Therefore, they have improved. You can say it has been improved from uh, 125 to 78, the data balance being reduced. You can compare that part. That is done. Now we, I am a little bit fastening because uh, the next section we need to discuss in quickly, we have to finish it off. Now, the next section, question number six. Uh, hybrid plantation limited HPL is a reputed local mango supply in the country with a different own farmhouse in Jaffna, Aradapura, and Kurunagala. They are considering establishing a fruit processing plant to preserve the mango during the excess supply and sell when they are in season. They are in season. The marketing team of HPL has conducted market research while spending rupees 10 million, and it was identified that there is a significant market vacuum for fruit processing. Like background information is given. HPL has purchased a machine reward of 400 million and initial working capital requirement will be 220 million. The working capital can be recovered at the end of the project period. That means it's related to the project appraisal. While reading, 400 million is the initial outflow, is the relevant cash flow. 20 million, again, relevant cash flow. You have to consider both as an outflow in the beginning, 420 million. Selling price and variable cost. You can sell uh, at the inception company intends to differentiate the product in the market. There will be more competition in the middle phase of the product launch, and it is expected that the project duration will be five years. You can see uh, selling price best case uh, 1750 and 500. That means you have to calculate expected selling price and expected variable cost you have to calculate. Then it is expected that selling price will increase by 10% and variable cost by 5% in each year during the estimated duration from year 1 to year 5. Okay, people have already calculated the contribution. Okay, we will look at the selling price. We will calculate. Uh, I will quickly work out here itself. Uh, 1000 into into 0.3 plus 750 into 0.4 plus 500 into 0.3. You will get the answer 300 and 3600 and selling price will be 750. Is it the expected selling price? 750. Variable cost if you calculate uh, 200 into point four plus 300 into point two plus uh, 400 into point four. If you work out, is it 300? 300 rupees the variable cost. Your contribution will be 450 rupee 
will be your contribution, right? As you have explained, that is the correct answer for 150. Variable for 300. It's great. Right. Right. Now, then you can look at the sales volume. Then sales volume also being given. Taxation, say taxable profit will be taxed at 30% of which taxes should be paid in the same year which it arises. If otherwise it has not been mentioned, taxes will be paid in one year in earlier. Uh, if it is specifically mentioned like this, you have to do like that. Uh, it's allowed to claim capital allowances 25% from the cost in a straight line basis on the cost of machinery, that is 400 million. You can claim over four years, 100 million each. And the machinery can be disposed at the end of the project for a scrap value of 25 million. Now, project period is five years. Within four years, you will claim the capital allowances, 400 million. Now, if you dispose, entire disposal proceed is a profit. That disposal gain will be taxed. It should be taken into the taxable profit, right? Overheads. So it can be directly attributed to the project will be 10 million and expects increase by 8% during the each year of project term. Right. Uh, each year of project term, right. It's, uh, it, it is being given uh, 10 million and it should be increased by 10.8. Likewise, it should go up. It was decided to allocate 2% of the revenue from compensation to head of his administration and selling away, it is irrelevant. You have to mean it is irrelevant. You should not consider it. And cost of capital, the real cost of capital is 6%, where the inflation is 8% per annum. Now, different multiple inflation rate affect to the revenue, variable cost, and overhead. Under such situation, you have to convert real cash flow into nominal cash flows. Therefore, you have to apply nominal cost of capital rate. Therefore, based on the given situation, you have to calculate. Can you remember the features equation you have to keep in mind? In the features equation, 1 plus i equal to 1 plus r into 1 plus h, 1 plus h inflation rate. Now, based on this information, you can say 1.06 into 1.08, then you will get the answer. If you can work it out, give a second, then we will work it out. 1 plus i equal 1.06 into 1.08. Then I can I equal one point zero six into one point zero eight percent. That great. Right, okay, clear. Sorry. I'm not in a good health condition. And... Right, what is the requirement? Calculate the net present value of the project, assess whether the project should be undertaken eight months. Calculate the rate which the project will be independent, that is IRR. Determine the sensitivity to the sales and variable cost. Identify the most critical factor among these two factors. I will show you the computation. And HPL received the following investment options to evaluate and explain the board of director while ranking them at this annualized NPV. You have to calculate 20 marks given. I will directly move to the answer. Uh, I will show we show in the Excel. I last Excel to share because PDF version, uh, which I have done, requires some modification, right? I will show you this is the complete calculation, guys. A research cost, I have not considered. It is a sunk cost. It should not be considered. Initial investment, I have considered 400 million and the residual value considered as an inflow. 
investment in working capital 20 million uh we have to incorporate it here and uh, we need to uh, i have not added it back uh and i need to add it here give me a second better if i can add working capital it will be recovered at the end of the year fifth year therefore working capital i will add it to 20 million here 20 million it will be recovered because in the tax calculation will be much easier i will say working capital working capital recovery of the working capital initially you will infuse and subsequently you will recover that investment in working capital right then when you calculating the uh, present value you will add both together multiply yes right now <clears throat> Increment the uh, revenue. Revenue calculation. I will show you how to work out the revenue calculation. This is how selling price determined. Then these are the sales quantities is given in the illustration. Selling price will increase by ten percent in each year. All right. Excel sheet. Take a moment. One number. Because I because I have prepared the answer very quickly recently. Then uh, I will share the Excel sheet. Uh, two percent compensation we will not consider it's a common allocate is not directly attributable to the project and it is not an incremental cost therefore it should not be considered here therefore now you can say uh, 750 is the expected selling price it has increased over five year period 10 percent increase then you can get the revenue variable cost expected value you have calculated i have explained this normal and worst case scenario 300 and 5 percent in inflation effect you can expect over five year period that's how i have calculated revenue variable cost and incremental cost uh incremental fix over eight eight percent increase i have anticipated uh yeah you can show total contribution there's no issue you can work out because since there are two different uh uh inflation rate i have shown revenue and variable cost separately head of his admin i have not shown and you can put a note and write it down it is a it is, a, it is not an incremental cost it is an allocation should not consider taxation you can see how i calculate the taxation net cash flow before tax i have taken here then i have deducted capital allowances and then tax you can take the taxable profit then deduct 30 percent taxation there why is the compensation not added? Compensation, it is not a compensator. compensation. It says to compensate overhead cost of head office. Two percent will be attributed. It is an allocation, Puta. Whether you have started this project or not, head office overhead cost will be incurred. It is not an incremental cost attributable to the project. Right? That's why I have not included head office administration cost. Then uh, once you have discounted the cash flows by using discount factor 14.48, you will end up with 66.881 as the NPV. This is the NPV you will end up with, right? 66 point, not 750, it should start 750 is the expected selling price. During the period, it estimated the selling price will increase by 10%. Therefore, 750 we have estimated, 10% increase you can estimate from year one itself. Therefore, not 750, it starts with 825. Right. Then the next one, they asked to calculate uh, IRR. When you are going to calculate IRR at 14.48 level, you have NPV of 66.881. Then definitely your discount factor IRR rate, which the NPV equal to zero. Therefore, your IRR rate should be definitely greater than 14.48. Therefore, this is how I have discounted the cash flows by using 30% uh, discount rate. 
and then you can determine the total value and then you can determine the IRR. Uh, this is <clears throat> uh, calculation, the, the minor modification, 30%, uh, sorry, give me a second, right here, 64 plus 20 million, there it has to be added. Right, then you can have an NPV of 74.891. Right, if you look at our original NPV 66, now it become 74 minus. Now, this is the formula you have to take lower discount rate 14.48 plus NPV at lower discount rate that is value is 66 million. 66,881,604. That NPV at lower level. Or calculate color value with the winning. Right. Value is 66,881,604. And it should be divided by NPV at lower rate, same amount, uh, 66,881,604 minus NPV at 30% rate, it is 70 million. You can see minus 74,891,606. Then if you can work out, the ratio will be a little bit different. Let me take this one. There might be some errors. Give me a second. I will change the formula. It is sixty six million eight hundred eighty one eighty one six hundred four. Then here it is divided by sixty six million eight hundred eighty one one six hundred four. Come on, come on, man. You can work out in your calculator. I'm quickly doing this one. And added by 74 million. If you minus it to minus, it becomes plus 74 million, 891,606. It is 22%. If you... Uh, how can we assume 30% easier for IR? Can you tell how to get? Right, Kuta, now at 14% level, it is a trial and error method. You can estimate 14% level, NPV is uh, 66 million. To NPV become zero, you have discount the cash flow at a higher discount rate. That's why I have uh, ad hoc, you can add, it is better if you can take a higher discount rate, then uh, you have to find out at which rate NPV equal to zero. Now, uh, when you're looking at the scenario, looking at the scenario, give me a second, I will show you. Uh, at 30%, your NPV is negative, right? Therefore, at 30%, your NPV is 74 million. At 14.48%, your NPV is 66 million. 66 million, right? Now, NPV ka window up in a rate ka in between 30, 30 and it should be lower than 30, greater than 14. You have to find out that ratio. 30 is the rate which we have selected. Ar arbitrarily, you can select it, right? So question about working capital management. There are some other questions also asking, which is not relevant to this particular uh, question. I will answer them short and sweet later.
Now sensitivity to the sales and sensitivity to the variable cost. That means you will look at what is the percentage change in the factor will affect to the NPV of the project, viability of the project. Now you have the NPV of 66,881,604. Now present, now you will look at if sales change by 11%, right? If change, sales change by present value of sales value change by 11%, definitely your project will be indifferent. That means break even. That means 11% change will change the entire project. In order to calculate the sensitivity, how you have calculated NPV divided by the present value of sale. But when calculating present value of sale, you have to take the present value of net pay because you have to pay the taxes. Therefore, total revenue minus tax effect, you have to take the net revenue. Now you have that revenue figure we have already calculated with a tax effect because 30% anyway you have to pay tax. 70% is belong to you. Therefore, 70% is the amount and you have to calculate present value of the net revenue. This is the present value of net revenue. If the present value of net revenue change by the 634 change by 11%, value exactly 66 million Again, a project better. Up is revenue, present value of net revenue change by 11%, project NP will be zero. Right. Now, same, uh, if you look at about variable cost, variable, if there's a cost, you can reduce it, you, uh, you can do it in million, yes. Uh, variable cost, you can claim tax, your tax expense will reduce. Entire 100% variable cost is not cost for you. 30% you can deduct as you can save your taxation. Therefore, you have to consider only 70% of the expense revenue you can inside the other side. Then you have calculate percentage of variable cost. Then you will receive 30%. That means where the present value of variable cost need to be changed by 30% in order to make project break even. That means IR, NPV zero, it's not viable, or you can make indifferent. You can see 223 into 30%, if it is changed by, it need to total variable cost need to change by 30% if, if it make to different, right? Now, while looking at these two factors, revenue has 11% sensitivity, variable cost has 30% sensitivity. Out of these two, which one is the most sensitive factor? Most sensitive factor is revenue. Out of this, you might see 30% is the higher. No, that means small change in revenue will make a huge effect in the total NPV. Therefore, out of these two, revenue is the highest sensitive factor that we need to keep in mind. Part B. Now we have the initial investment. Present value of net cash flows given. I have calculated the NPV. Now the tenors are different because this one three years, vegetable farm five years, and solar farm ten years. Therefore, that tenor is different. When the tenor is different, you have to calculate annualized NPV. Therefore, I have worked out the annualized NPV. After calculation of annualized NPV, solar project gives the highest NPV, uh, annualized NPV. Therefore, uh, you can remember the annuity factor 1 minus 1 plus R power N divided by R. That is the formula you have learned. The formula is given here. Right. Even here, and you can learn. Therefore, based on the given information, highest annualized NPV there in solar power. Therefore, solar power project should be selected. Right, that answer is there. The last one, last question. I have a little bit. Uh, yeah, last illustration we will look at. 
this is relevant to uh, transfer pricing and you can see uh, SBA is a company that produces television and component for television. The company has two division S and division B. Division S manufactures component for television. Division S sells component to division B and external customers. Division B uses five of the component for each of the television that is manufactures and sells television directly to external customers. Since time is passing, I'm a little bit fastening. Look at variable cost of division is direct material labor variable of it. Definitely they will take outside. The following information is related next year is also available. Fixed cost 5.6 million. Production capacity uh, given components 175,000. External demand 150,000. Demand for division B 80,000 component. External market price 5,000. Now you have capacity 175, you will supply 80,000, 95,000, you can sell externally, right? Division B sells its final product television to the external market and it needs five components for each of the television. Again, if it purchase 80,000, divide by five means 16,000 will be the output. Claim price 45,000, other material 4,000, direct label 6,200, variable of 8,600. Fixed cost are budgeted to be 14.6 million next year. Annual sales of televisions are expected to be 16,000 units. Transfer pricing policy, brand transfer pricing policy. Uh, division S must satisfy the demand of Division B before selling the company externally. The transfer price are set up at opportunity cost. We'll look at what is the opportunity cost of selling internally. Division B is allowed to purchase component from Division S or from the external supply right. requirement. Assuming that Division B buys all the component is required from Division S, prepare a profit statement for each division detailing sales and cost, showing external sales and internal company transfers separately where appropriate aid mark. A specialist external supply has approached Division B and offered to supply 80,000 component at a price of 4,200 each. The component fulfilled the same function as those manufactured by Division S. The manager of Division B has accepted the offer and has agreed to buy all components it requires from the supplier. Prepare a revised profit statement for each division and the total for SBA company. Uh, six months. <clears throat> Division S has just received an inquiry from a new custom for the production of 25,000 component. The manager of Division S requires a total profit for the year for the division 45 million. This uh, is a mistake. I will show you it is a mistake at the typing. I will let you make the correction. We'll do the correction while we are discussing. Calculate the minimum price per component to sell 25,000 compared to new customer that would enable manager of Division S to meet the profit target. Right. Okay. With this information, now we will go to the calculation. I will share with the answer script. Question number seven. Okay. Uh, external sales division. When we take the external sales, we'll take to the total company column. Division S sells ninety five thousand unit at five thousand because total hundred seventy five thousand. There, I think I have worked out yes. Total production capacity 175,000. 175,000 internal trans 80,000. 95,000 I can sell externally. Right. External demand 150, but 55,000 unsatisfied. Therefore, I will sell 95,000 externally at 5,000. Internal sales I need to work out. I have worked it out. Look at this one. Really. If I sell uh, externally, right, I would have earned 600 to be contribution because selling price 5,000, 1,000 for direct material, 1,800 labor and variable of 1,200. My variable cost is 4,400. If I sell external, I can earn 600 to be contribution, right? If I sell internally, Right, I need to whatever the unit I am transferring, 
I can't get 600 because I have idle capacity as well. Because my, I have on 75,000 capacity, but extend them are only 450,000. Due to internal supply, I have lost the supply of 55,000 unit only. Right. Therefore, my opportunity cost is 55,000. If I have supply externally, I could have earned that. But since I am telling 80,000 internally, I have lost that contribution from 55,000 unit. Therefore, 55,000 into 600, that is 33 million. Now, internally, I am selling 80,000 unit. I have to split among the 80,000 unit. Then my internal transfer price would be 4,400 is the variable cost plus this opportunity cost of 412 rupees and 50 cents. Therefore, my internal transfer price will be 4,812 rupees and 50 cents. That's how I got 385 million internal sales. Amagatti magi variable marginal cost plus opportunity cost. If I without selling 80,000 internally, if I have transferred 55,000 unit externally, I could have been earned additional 33 million. Right. So with, now it has been mentioned what before you sell, you have to supply internally. It has been mentioned. If it, you can sell it internally and balance, then there's no issue. Now with that, you will sell internally 385 million. This is a revenue to this division and cost to the division B. You should not consider in whole company because it is the internal transfer. These two are internal transfer. Direct material, 1,400 per unit into total capacity because internally 80,000 externally 90 by entire capacity being used 175,000 to 1,400 direct labor same 1,800 into 175,000 variable over it same 1,200 into 175,000 uh, division B they have sold 16,000 unit direct material other than the internal transfer, 4,000 per each unit into 16,064. And direct labor, 6,200 into 16,000. Variable over 1,600 uh, into 16,000. That's how total contribution calculated. Then I have deducted the fixed cost. Total profit calculated, 216 million total profit will be there for the whole company. This is how profit is looks like. Why we did it? My profit take a pain. That is part A. So you have to keep in eye when you have this kind of illustration. How to determine optimal trans pricing range? You have to determine the minimum trans price marginal cost plus opportunity cost. That is the minimum. Maximum one should be the external supplier price. In between, any price will be optimal. You have to evaluate like that. I think you have already learned. Part B. Now external supplier. Now internally we are transferring 4,812. That is the minimum transfer price need to be supplied. But if external supplier offer 4,200, definitely manage of division B will purchase. Now they are offering at 4,200. Even we produce by ourselves, we have to spend 4,400. That means external supplier price is less than our marginal cost definitely we should purchase from intern externally or supplying internally balance amount we can sell external market therefore their external sales we have 150,000 unit 175,000 we can't supply because maximum demand 150,000 we will supply at 105,000 each Division B, as revenue won't change. There is no internal sales. Direct material, 210 million because we are 1,400 each into 150,000 unit. Here, there's a difference. Division B, they are direct additional material, 4,000 to 16,000 plus. Component they are purchasing 4,200. 
आई फोर थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड इंडू एटी थाउजेंड के लिए मल्टीप्लाई करें दे रिक्वायर्ड वो फाइव कंपोनेंट पर ईच यूनिट फाइव इंटू सिक्सटीन थाउजेंड मीन एटी थाउजेंड इनिशियल वी हैव ट्रांसफर दिस कंपोनेंट इंटरनली फोर थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड इंटू एटी थाउजेंड नाउ दे कैन पर Direct labor also one hundred fifty thousand here. It is sixteen thousand. There is no change. Variable of it thousand two hundred to one hundred fifty thousand. Here thousand six hundred to sixteen thousand. Now you can see divisional contribution here eighty four thousand four hundred into profit here hundred eighty thousand six hundred. What do they like? The main profit they can answer is eighty four thousand four hundred remains the. Therefore he is happy. On the other hand. Manage or division B manage also will be happy. His profitability also went up. Ultimately, overall profitability also went up. Two sixteen went up to two hundred sixty five. That is correct. Right here, this is part second part uh, of part B. I have made the change. Uh, now, one hundred seventy-five thousand in the production capacity. We have external demand of one hundred fifty thousand. Therefore, surplus capacity twenty-five thousand is there. Now, this is they have no any opportunity cost because it is surplus capacity. Now, mom, we can assume that I am going to give an illustration. Forty-five million is wrong. Uh, I have made it ninety million because currently we are earning eighty four point four million profit in division S. So my paper is that one ninety million kela instead of forty five kela. Then what I have done, uh, in this illustration, eighty four point four million I have already earned. I want to earn ninety million. Additional, I I wanted to earn five point six million. In order to earn five point six million, there are twenty five thousand units available. Therefore, currently you require additional two hundred twenty four rupees contribution per unit. You require two hundred twenty four rupees. Variable cost four hundred four four thousand four hundred. Ethnic here, I do not understand. You require additional profit. You in order to achieve Ninety million profit. You require deficit is five point six. To five point six, you have a you need to twenty five thousand. Each unit you should earn two hundred twenty four. Your variable cost is four thousand four hundred. At two hundred twenty four, it become four thousand six hundred twenty four. This is make a gain for the value that the ano. Just break even formula you can use. Therefore, at two hundred twenty four, I have made it to ninety million. Profit for the division is right. Uh, I will share this uh, this one because I have made some uh, changes. I will share it to uh, the desktop. Uh, right. Now, uh, this one I we we can share it with you now since we have already discussed this one. I will in the chat. I will share. Uh, give me a second. How to share? I have shared the answer script in the chat, and I will ask uh, the Sri Lanka also to be shared. Because guys, uh, I have little bit, uh, yeah, some let's say fifty five marks. It's great because you have to work very hard because I have little bit faster when explaining because uh, within the given time period I need to explain and uh, some people have initially joined and subsequently left. But anyway. Uh, when it comes to the final examination, what I have to say, uh, you have to focus on your studies and do some past papers, do some mock papers, 
and do some some more additional sums and uh I have shared. Give me a second. I have shared. Give me a second. Uh, uh, give me a second. I have shared in the wrong. Give me a second. I, I will share it now. Everyone, right. It should be addressed to everyone. Uh, give me a second. Whether you have received, and guy was I was super fast because within the Gita given time period, I have to explain. And uh, after office hours, uh, still I'm in the office and I have to explain it a bit fast. But I think if you have properly done your task and it is not difficult to understand, I have understood few students they have not properly followed, but they have still they have time. Follow up your studies and do more examination, or more questions, do more past papers. You can easily pass, right? Manage the time. You have uh, 180 minutes time to write the paper, 15 minute planning time. What you need to do, you have to practice more and more questions, right? In order to time management. Each question, each mark, you will carry out 1.8 minutes. Therefore, keep that in mind. Attempt all the questions. And hope, uh, even though I was rushed in very, uh, due to the time constraint, I have explained much. And it is very important. Now you can understand that you have concentrated throughout the three hour paper, uh, three, uh, close to three hours, you have concentrated. Then you can get more things. That's why uh, you have to uh, concentrate on your studies. I think it was an effective communication. I will expect your uh, feedback because uh, I, some students say that they have watched our my uh, webinars. Thank you. And anyway, disseminate this information. I am sharing my knowledge. At the end of the day, once, once we meet as a member, it is great privilege that I was help some of part of your journey. Uh, and I will expect that you will be meet in future. And I have already shared Excel and thank you very much for joining and wish you all the best for your future exam and you will be able to achieve great success if you can't do, no one can do because you are facing a toughest exam but if you properly prepare, you can achieve this a golden opportunity to complete the exam. Uh, guys, if uh, you, you, you can uh, uh, share me any idea, any comments and you can share with institute and uh, you can uh, share me to WhatsApp or social media platform. Give me the feedback and give me the feedback to institute as well. And wish you all the best. And uh, uh, wish you all the best and uh, see you soon as a member in future. And please focus on your studies and thank you and hope you have understood and I will share the uh, answer script with uh, CSE like Excel sheet I will share. I will ask them to share the Excel sheet. Then you can look at the uh, calculation as well. Good night and have a nice day. We'll see you in, uh, in future uh, as members or any other forum we will meet you. And since in a virtual scenario, uh, scenario we may not interact but you can see you can say hi when you meet again thank you for joining and wish you all the best for your future exam good night and all the best uh, aruna we can wind up the session thank you yes sir thank you thank you